Welcome to RMTV. We know from the feedback that we've had from members that you're interested in the different roles and responsibilities of the officers of the union. So in the first of a series, we dropped in on President John Leach at his office at the London HQ to talk about the role that he plays and the job that he does as president of RMT. The core role of the president of the RMC, Jeff, is the, for the three-year term of office that the president holds, is to be the custodian of the union's rules and constitution. Um, it's worthwhile always remembering that the cornerstone foundation, bedrock I call it, of the RMC is its democracy. Uh, and that uh, is enshrined within our constitution and written out in our rule book. And the president's primary responsibility is to make sure that rule book is adhered to and the integrity of it isn't compromised by anyone within the union. On a general day-to-day -day basis, John, I mean, you're here at Unity House a lot of the time and obviously out and about around the country talking to branches as well. Um, in terms of the process, I mean, the decision-making uh, process within the union, where do you sit within that? So, for example, around the uh, meetings of the, of the Grades Committee? Yeah, I chair uh, the uh, Council Executives meetings and I chair the General Grades Committee meetings. The General Grades Committee will meet two, three, sometimes four or even five times a week in Unity House, uh, which means that I'm chairing those meetings. The Council Executives meeting is four times a year, but invariably more often than that, and I chair those meetings. Uh, so those meetings are the ones I chair along with the annual general meeting. The role of the president of the AGM is uh, pivotal. You chair the AGM from start to finish, and uh, you're there from resolution one uh, until the end. Uh, it's worth remembering that the annual general meeting in the RMT's constitution uh, is a supreme governing body and it's, that word has been chosen for a reason. There is no high, higher body of authority uh, and its cornerstone really is the fact that it's made up of rank and file delegates who are also elected to it uh, from all of the branches grouped into their uh, regions um, and the president uh, chairs it ensures that the debate is conducted in a comradely but uh, thorough manner uh, and um, you know it's a long week, it's a tough week but it's the best week of the year really because that's when you get the, uh, the, uh, the orders from the members uh, to carry out the uh, resolutions that they want. John showed us around the Unity House boardroom where the union's executive bodies, the Council of Executives and the General Grades Committee meet and do business beneath his watchful eye. The RMT boardroom is steeped with history, from the portraits of past presidents gracing its walls to the records of the executive proceedings, uh, which go back almost a century. Even the furniture, including the president's chair, has a story to tell. There's some history behind this one, Jeff. If you look carefully into the top of this chair, you will see the letters carved ASRS. And the ASRS stands for the Amalgamated Society of Railway Servants which was one of the predecessor unions which merged in 1913 to become the NUI. It was the President's Chair in the ASRS, which was formed in 1872, uh, and then went into the NUR in 1913, and today is used by myself and will be used by the Presidents that come after me in the RMT. Uh, and that's part of our history and it's part of our heritage, uh, and it's what we would call living history. The table. This is the executive committee uh, table. As I understand it, this was built uh, for the union in 1913. And some historic issues have been dealt with around this table. Uh, the 1919 railway strike, very famous historic event for our union. The uh, 1926 general strike, uh, the First and Second World Wars and the effect on the membership and the people of the country. Um, the miners' strike, railway privatisation, railway nationalisation, the election in the 1945 Labour government. Mm. Uh, and today, this, you know, yesterday, the council executives dealt with all of the resolutions carried at this year's AGM and dealt with 94 separate votes mm. on separate issues, sitting around here, basic rules of debate, resolutions written out, voted on, agreed, put in a minute book. This, these are the uh, proceedings and reports from 1933. I made reference to these this year in my presidential speech at the annual general meeting, where I um, hope this is what we, where I talked about the 
uh, President's address dealing with all kinds of issues, but including things like the advent of fascism in uh, Nazi Germany and what the Labour movement was doing to deal with that. And it's, here, here it is, mm. for real. Um, and the uh, economic crisis that the country was dealing with at that time. I drew a parallel to where we are today in my speech. Um, only because we learned from their lessons and the union was on top of it then, I hope we are now as well. Our German comrades, this is 1933, so Hitler's just in power, placing their trust in the democratic principles and believing that fascist action was not possible in their own country, were overwhelmed, surprised mm. and broken. Mm. And we know what came later to them. Let us remember, and that's when he goes on to say what I said at the beginning. So it's, it really is there and it's important and we preserve this because we know the importance of keeping a true and accurate record, but also mm. to learn a lesson mm. from it. Well, these are some of my predecessors going back uh, through the whole history of the uh, RMT and the NUR uh, and the ASRS before that. Um, some of these people I've known personally, like Tony Donaghy, John Cogger, Phil Boston, Rich Hopkins, uh, and, and uh, Don Lachlan, and then the others before that. But you go right back to the beginning here, where you see uh, uh, President Bellamy, who would have dealt with the railway strikes of 1911, and, uh, and the general strike uh, in 1926 was dealt with um, by Dobby, who appears twice, but there's only one picture of him. Uh, these were all rank and file elected railway men, they are, were all men, mm -hmm. uh, and they were presidents. Uh, and they all had done their terms of office uh, and moved on and went back to work. Uh, and, you know, at the end of this year, there's going to be an election, so my mugshot's going to be up there. January the 1st and onwards it goes onwards. Beyond um, Unity House John, beyond the uh, uh, meetings of the Executive and the, and the Grades Committee, um, what else would the President get involved in um, outside of this building? Well I, I've made it my point to get out actually off Unity House as often as I can and visit branches with 12 regional councils, most of those I've personally met and um, visited. Um, and, and that's a, co a key part of the job, and also workplace visits as often as possible, wherever they may be, Caledonia, McBrain, Ferries, um, permanent way workers, Aberdeen, offshore workers, uh, throughout the piece. I also represent the union when we meet uh, the government, uh, when we meet uh, sometimes senior employers, but remembering we've got a full, fully well-qualified team of officials and representatives out there doing that job as well. John, tell us a bit about your background and your role before you became president and presumably the one that you'll be going back to when your term concludes. I joined London Underground in 1985 as a railman and uh, worked on stations throughout that time. Um, currently a station supervisor. And I say currently quite uh, importantly because the uh, three-year term of office president, uh, when it's over, you go back to the job you had before you were elected and that's what I'll do. Uh, before I was president, I also, you know, been thoroughly involved in the NUR and then the RMT after that. Served two terms on the council executives for the London Transport Region uh, through the late 1990s, early 2000s. Uh, but at the end of this year, I'm back to my station, back to work. I'll be a new president, elected by the membership, getting on with the job. So this is very much a, a role in the union that anyone could aspire to. That's right, and so they should. I mean, one of the most important features of our constitution uh, is that the president and the council executive members uh, rotate. They do a fixed three-year terms of office, and then the mantle of leadership is passed on to an elected new person. We believe that does a number of things. It encourages and brings on new people. It makes people stay fresh, uh, and it provides for a degree of accountability which we think second to none.